Hello, welcome to lesson eight of Mastering Java. I'm Jason again. We're going to be talking again more about methods and methods that are part of classes in Java. We've used them before. We've talked about methods in general, but now we want to talk about returning values from a method. We have actually already done this in the first couple of lessons uh, here in this volume of Mastering Java, so you should already be familiar with returning values from a method, but now we're going to combine that idea with using the classes and so just kind of inch our way forward. So we're going to basically talk about modifying the code from lesson number seven. So lesson number seven you should already remember we had the aircraft class. We have all these uh, variables here defined in the class and then we created a method called calculate endurance which is how many hours the airplane can stay in the air. And so we created a local variable, we calculated the endurance and then we printed the output to the screen. But now we want to change it and we want to make it so that so that uh, instead of printing it to the screen, we actually return the answer back up to where this method is being called from. And to do that, we're going to use the return keyword. Now, you may remember from before, the return keyword um, li literally tells the, the subroutine or the method to just stop what you're doing and return back to wherever called, uh, wherever you were called from. So this particular case from the previous lesson, it was a void. Um, method, which means that we're not returning any values, but you can still use the return keyword. For instance, if I put the return keyword here, notice how it um, highlights purple. It's one of the Java protected keywords. Whenever the subroutine gets down to this point to the return keyword, it stops and it goes back to where it was called from. So basically, wherever this return keyword is, if I accidentally put it here, if I did the return keyword here, um, then uh, this statement here is not going to be executed. In fact, if you see it, it says unreachable code. That's basically telling you that anytime this calculate endurance subroutine is is called, we're going to calculate the endurance all right, but we're going to return bounce back before we print anything to the screen. I'll just show you that right now. Let's hit save and let's hit run. And it says errors exist. Proceed anyway. Let me go ahead and proceed anyway. It's telling me that there's basically an error. It tries to print the 172, but basically this is not going to work because I have code that's never going to execute in this subroutine. If I take this out, then all that stuff should basically disappear, run it again, and everything works just fine. So wherever the return statement is, is where the um, subroutine stops. Now, when you use a return statement by itself like that, that means you're using a void um, method. Remember, whatever's out in front of the method name is what value you intend to return, what type of variable, whether it be an integer or a double or whatever. In this case, it's not returning anything. So if we use a return statement, it's not returning a value. The return statement just causes it to jump out. Now let's take this all this stuff that we've talked about. We've kind of talked a lot. Let's take and copy the entire code. I'm going to hit control uh, C to copy the entire class. I'll go off to a new project, go down below uh, the uh, base class here, and I'll paste that in. So we just basically put the class into a new Java file. And then I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to grab the object declarations here, or the object creations, and I'm going to go down and uh, select all of the code that puts values into the variables. And I'm going to hit Control C and copy that and go into here up into my main method and hit Control V to paste it in. So I'm going to hit uh, save there. All right, so let me go ahead and clear this buffer out. So essentially, I've just copied code from the previous guy, and uh, essentially, I haven't really changed anything. What I want to do is show you that maybe instead of a more logical way of doing it, instead of coming down here, calculating, and just printing the answer, let's just calculate the answer and return that answer back to where it was called from. So if I want to return a value, then I hit the return keyword and what do I want to return? I want to return whatever endurance calculates to be. So I hit return endurance. That tells Java when this subroutine is executed or this method is executed, do all this stuff and then return back to where you were called from and return the value of endurance, which is a double type of variable, a decimal point type of variable. Notice it's, it's underlined red because there's a problem here. Um, I have declared this method as void. So of course it's not uh, void anymore, it needs to return a double. And so whatever's in front of the method name, you have to match it with whatever you're trying to return. We're trying to return a double value, which is what I've declared this to be. This is returning a double value, everything matches up, there's no more errors anymore. So let me go ahead and hit save. 
So remember, this is just a template. I haven't actually called this method yet. I'm just telling Java that inside of the class there's these variable names and there's this method. And this method is going to uh, take these two member variables, divide them, get an answer, uh, store them in a temporary variable, and return the answer back to where it was called from. So back up in my main method, I have created the two objects for the Cessna aircraft and the Piper aircraft. I put all of the information into those variables, and now I would like to use my newly structured method to print something for the, for the screen. So I can do system.out.println. There's a couple of different ways I can do it, actually. One way is I could say, let's do for the Cessna, I could do a quotation mark Cessna 172 endurance is and then I can go over here to the plus, I can actually just call the method directly and put that inside the print statement and the value that gets returned from that subroutine will be put into the print statement. So I can say Cessna 172 dot and then I get a choice. These are the four variables that are a part of this class but notice that the method is also in blue here as well. Calculate endurance. So I'll double click that and then basically populates it in with the two parentheses there. So what this is telling Java to do is print this uh, phrase to the screen and then whatever gets returned back from this method, which should be a double value, is going to get inserted into this spot. You need to view calling methods in Java, especially when they return values, you need to view them as kind of like a placeholder for an answer. When I see something like this in Java, I know I'm calling a method and I know that that method returns a number. So wherever I put this in my code, I need to view it as basically an answer that's forthcoming from the code. So let me hit save and let me hit run and you can see that I get exactly the same answer that I have always been getting for these calculations. We've just structured our code a little bit different. All right. Now I can certainly do exactly the same thing for the Piper. In fact, I can go uh, and just hit enter here and do system.out.println like this and I can go here and I can say Piper Saratoga Endurance is and then over here, what would I do? I would go to the Piper object, Piper, Sarah, Toga, and then I hit a period. And when I do that, Java recognizes, okay, that's an object that's instantiated from a class. Here's a method that's part of this guy. Double click, and it's in there. So I view this, again, as an answer forthcoming from that method that's a part of this object. And so whenever I hit save and run, actually, let me put a backslash in just to give me a little spacing here. Uh, then what I get is Piper Saratoga Endurance is 5.0. It's exactly the same answer I've been getting all along. So it's perfectly valid to put these statements inside or these method calls inside of your print statements. Now there are of course a million ways to do anything in Java. Um, so if I wanted to, I could create a local double variable. I'll just change it a little bit. Um, let's call it Endurance Saratoga. I'm not going to, uh, and then I'm going to declare it and I'm going to set it equal to, what am I going to set it equal to? Piper Sarah Toga dot endurance, calculate endurance, semicolon. So what's happened here is I can create a variable and call it something, anything I want, and I can set it equal to the value that gets returned from this guy. And then down in my print statement, if I want to do it differently, I can just take this method call out of it and in its place put endurance Sarah Toga like that. All right, so I'll go ahead and hit save and hit run and I get exactly the same thing. So I guess what I'm trying to do is just show you different ways of handling the situation. We've, we're kind of inching our way through the idea of classes and objects being useful. And now that you know that you can have methods inside of your classes, you need to know the different ways you can utilize methods. All right, one way is just to call the method. It could be void. It could do something. It can print something to the screen. That could be useful depending on what you're doing. More likely, though, you would create something. Uh, you would create a method which would perform a calculation or a function and return some sort of value of some kind to where the caller is coming from. And when you're returning values from methods, you can, you can use them in calculations. You can use them directly in your print statements and just have the method called directly from the print statement. Or you can call the method, assign it to a local variable, and then use that in a print statement. It really just depends on how you want to structure your code. They're both fine. Um, so I, I encourage you to play around with both of them there. So at this point, we have really gotten good at adding methods to our classes. In the next lesson, we're going to expand on that. 
and start to use parameters inside of the parentheses to make more complicated type of methods that could be a part of classes in Java. So I strongly encourage you to go to the exercises right now and, um, and, and work that exercise because we're going to have a very similar type of setup there where you can get practice in Java with altering and modifying your methods to return values even when that method is part of a class definition.